Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Daniela and today we'll continue with Mindhunter, this time episode 4 of the first season uh, in the last episode. Um, Bill and Holden went back to Sacramento. The person that attacked the, the woman in the previous episode um, attacked again another woman with a dog but fortunately this time managed to kill her and the dog of course but they caught him uh, it was a man called Dwight uh, he also had um, some anger issues with his mother and he had to put it out um, they went back to Ed to talk about his life, his killings, his feelings while doing it. Um, and also, a new member joins the team, Dr. Wendy Carr. She's um, a teacher and she has a lot of insights so it will be interesting well as usual i got something to drink the episode is ready to start so without further ado let's do this is he supposed to be in here still in the house. I'm sorry to startle you. Here's the estimate. House looks good. Can't think you need much beyond door and window sensors. I included in the cost three keypads. Would you ever just sell the stickers for the windows and a sign for the front lawn? Mm. Signs come with the sensors, I'm afraid. Of course they do. <laughs> that makes sense. Virginia State Penitentiary. Monty Ralph Rissell. We're doing research, interviewing Men like you. Men like me. Murderers with multiple victims. To better understand why you do what you do. I'd like to know too. You think I could get some Big Red? Big Red. Pop. You know, like soda? We'll see what we can do. That'll depend on the insights. How did you choose your victims? Victims? That doesn't sound good. No, it doesn't. I don't think I'm interested. Fine. You want to diddle around? We'll walk out of here. We'll go have a nice, leisurely lunch, wherever the fuck we want, and then take the picturesque drive back to Quantico. What's the rest of your day look like? We're talking to men like you because we can't understand how someone could fuck up their life so completely before he's barely old enough to vote. I first got into trouble at 14. They sent me to Florida, this uh, <laughs> juvenile facility. I had four girls while I was under observation. But you didn't kill those girls in Florida. That came later. What was different when you came back from the hospital? What changed? I come back up here, get myself a job, a girlfriend. Girlfriend's a year ahead. She goes off to state college. But, you know, we keep in touch. We write probation, counseling, therapy. And I got to keep checking in or they send me back. But you've got yourself a girlfriend. She sends me a letter tells me, shocker, there's all these guys up at school, you know, there's all this, uh... She tells me, in so many words, she wants to ball other guys. What do you know? There she is, making out with some Thor. Chicks, what can you do? You can't live with them. Car pulls into the lot. Girl on her own, maybe 20, 25. It's like, the idea of doing it pops in your head like a like a sneeze. I hop out the car, tap on the window, pull the gun, drag her into the woods. I'm trying to, but she won't shut up. She takes off, screaming, runs through the parking lot down a ravine. Now, she's stronger than me, but I'm fast. I catch up to her. I get her in a headlock, smash her head against a rock, pull her underwater, and that's that. No more drama. You had a gun. Why not use it? 
wanted to cool her off. Do you think it would have ended differently if she hadn't, if she wasn't? Wasn't what? A fucking prostitute? Yeah, it could be. Could be. Second time, this blonde chick, she will not stop with the questions. Is that why you stabbed her? I had to. She wanted to fuck up. Then you drove around for hours in her car. I did let one of them go, though. We're in the car. I'm getting ready. She has no idea. All of a sudden, she starts crying. Out of nowhere. Tells me her daddy's dying. Cancer. My brother had cancer. Cancer, it's a... Uh, it's a bitch, man. It's a weird feeling, man. What's a weird feeling, Monty? Showing mercy. What? Come on, kid. You don't expect us to buy your mercy horseshit. I think what Agent Tench means I is... I think I've had enough science for one day. Throat's a little dry. Why do we think he's suddenly being honest with us? But we don't think he's being completely honest. Do we? <laughs> we just need to extract what's useful and discard the rest. So my mistake with Russell was what? <laughs> What were you doing? 80? 100? You turned without looking. You were speeding. It doesn't matter. I had the right away. It doesn't matter. That's the law, buddy. The law? The law? No. Hey. Here's the fucking oh, law, no, pal. You can't do that. Okay? I'm gonna call the police. You wanna call Nancy? There's something going on in his family. Are you okay? With his kid or something? Or did you see? I didn't see it coming, Holden. You could have been killed. I think if I called Nancy. If I heard her voice, I'd just lose it. You know, we adopted a boy three years ago. He's six now. Nancy always wanted a family, and I guess I did too. But we can't have kids of our own. It's not going well. He's a beautiful boy. At first, I thought he was just quiet. You know, a quiet baby. Nothing wrong with that. He can speak. He just won't. I feel like we're failing him somehow. Or maybe he was like this before, but it's a real strain. When the car was spinning out, I just... You have no idea what I'm trying to say to you. Not exactly. So the girlfriend writes him a Dear John letter, and he... Whistle cracks. But he doesn't call her or write back. No, he goes down there. He stalks her, like a hunter. Not like a hunter. He doesn't kill the girlfriend. He only watches her with her new bow. So he kills the first one because she likes it, or pretends to? It's dominoes. Her compliance makes him angry. The whole thing is just fucking chaos. He needed to reassert control. Exactly. I mean, it may be that they can't change the ultimate outcome, but they can affect when and how it happens. That is exactly what I was thinking, which is why I asked the question. But when Rizzle sensed that his victim was enjoying herself, it turned him into a murderer. So yes, what happens to these men is normal, but the way that they process it is not. You were born in Wellington, South Kansas. You're the youngest of three kids, and your parents divorced when you were seven. Yeah, my mom blamed that on me. No idea why. Pretty soon after, mom up and married Hank. Mom wanted to be with Hank. Hank didn't want to raise somebody else's kids, so he bought his shit. Thought that'd be enough. Mom and Hank divorced when I was 12. That was kind of my doing. 14, things got a little worse. Burglary, larceny, car theft, rape twice. My mom somehow got him to send me to Florida. And I get back. I'm 17, living on my own, working double shifts at Pizza Hut. Nobody wanted me, man. Nobody on this earth ever wanted me. If only they'd let me stay with my dad, it'd all be different. Might even be a lawyer. So your dad wanted you? Have a nice car, house. Be out in the backyard perfecting my recipe for barbecue. I'd have found my way. So Rissell's the real victim here. That's how he sees it, sure. A pathological liar who murdered five women sees himself as the victim. We're not flattering him or helping him. Beverly Jean Shaw, 22. Never came home from her babysitting job. Four days later, we find her in the dump on Wapsinonic Mountain. Based on stomach contents, we think she was killed right away around midnight Wednesday. She was sitting like this at the dump for four days? Well, no. And she had been sitting at the dump the whole four days. We'd see more insect infestation and animal trauma on the corpse. So between when she was murdered on Wednesday and when the body was discovered four days later, she had to be someplace else. The family local? Uh, parents upstate, fiance in town. What happened to Beverly? Has to be an outsider. Draped over the ironing board here. Is that human hair? Yes, sir. You have it? Sure. But you do think that the unsub scalped Beverly and then draped it over the ironing board? Does that mean something? Everything in this photo has meaning. If the unsub meant to display the hair, that means he was saying something. He could have put the hair anywhere. Right. No, I get it now. Coroner's report said Beverly was killed and then butchered. Isn't that what hunters do? That we're probably looking for a loner. These men like to explore the fantasy first. 
gives them a certain attitude towards women, hence a loner. Close in a community like this, you would have spotted that by now. I think our man is an outsider, probably a drifter. Ugly end for someone you just proposed to. How long were they engaged? A couple months, I think. Could be you felt trapped. By a pretty young blonde? Remember what Wendy said? Colleague of ours, psychologist. Events we process as good news sometimes hit these killers the wrong way. Who found the body? Uh, Welder. Alvin Moran out taking his dog for a hike. At the dump? He have an alibi? Alibi? He came to us. Why does he need an alibi? Sometimes the killer will insinuate himself into the investigation. You go to take a piss, you see Beverly Jean's body. I thought it was a store mannequin or something. Wouldn't your dog have gone straight for it? Might have, but that's not what happened. I took care of my business, I collected my dog, and I went to the police. Right away, a few hours later, next day. A couple hours later, maybe that night. It was actually morning when you came in, sir. Why'd you wait so long to report the body, Mr. Moran? Scared the cops might want me for it, OK? Wife talked me out of that. I did my duty as a citizen. I've seen cops get desperate, grab whoever they can get. But why you? Got a bit of a record, all right? It ain't much. I lit up a few fires when I was a kid, got into a few fights. I come into town, you know, grab a beer now and then. I've seen Beverly Jean a few times. You saw Beverly Jean at a bar? At the kettle. She wasn't interested. End of story. Mm. Maybe I asked her more than once. More than once that night at the bar? Or on more than one occasion? I guess you'd say on more than one occasion. If Alvin Moran had a married man's anger, he'd have tortured that girl and then killed her. No question in my mind. What if it was the wife? She was almost our babysitter. She found almost. out that, you know, her husband is trying. Did you talk with her about it? When she left, Alvin wouldn't shut up about the girl. She got jealous. She was young and skinny and... Beautiful breasts. Oh, such pretty blonde hair. Didn't need that in my house. Not with two little kids in the picture. Were you aware that your husband made overtures to Beverly on several occasions? <laughs> Didn't I just say he had a thing for the poor girl? Alvin does this. It's like sport fishing. He doesn't mean anything by it. We were told he was at home with you watching television the night Beverly disappeared. You think Alvin did this? Oh, no. The idiot was with me. The whole night? The whole night. Self-pity, absolutely. And the psychopath understands how that plays to his audience. Exactly. But the complicated part is that they actually believe it. They have to. I mean, if they admitted that they rape and murder for pleasure, it would destroy them. They need to be seen to have power over someone. And yet, circumstance demands that they erase the only witness, which means they have to do the whole thing over again. I'm trying to frame an overall taxonomy, except I don't know where to start. Start with the crime scene. Kemper's like a general planning his campaigns. But Rissell... Rissell didn't even intend to kill his first victim. All of his victims seem spontaneous, and he just walks away when he's done. Or his Kemper took photographs and dissected the victims and was very good at hiding the remains. You might think it is my job to impede your progress with my insistence on timelines and established protocols. No, sir, not at all. That is not my job. My job is to provide guidance and quite a bit of protection. The LEAA explained that the application was anticipated. How could that be, I wondered? It seems they know more about what's going on in our basement than I was comfortable including in the application. I so apologize. It... Sir, this is my fault. Your research has been awarded $200,000. The National Institute of Justice heard about the LEAA. They are in competition, so the NIJ has awarded you an additional $185,000. Hmm. was a thing the behavioral behavioral why so hard to say it behavior behavioral science unit got funding more than expected for their research a lot of people seem to be interested in that which is great in this episode they left uh, at camper and went to talk with another serial killer, uh, Monte. Uh, he killed like five girls by the age of, I don't know, he was a teen, 18? When is, when can you vote in America? 21? 
18? I don't know, something. He was still, you know, pretty young. Uh, but he was also cut pretty quickly. He's a bit different. A bit different. He's different from um, Ed Camper as his method of killing. and uh, But at the same time, it's the same. And I'm not only talking about the serial killer part. But uh, because he... He also likes to see himself kind of a victim and shifts shifts blame towards especially his mother. His parents got divorced and apparently he wanted to live with his father but his mother didn't let him. Uh, she got remarried. Monte didn't like the, the new husband. And he, he said that, um, you know, he started pretty young as well with small things and then um, escalated. Start with small crimes, then bigger and bigger. And it all seemed like um, it started when his girlfriend left him and maybe he was, um, I don't know, he wanted to some sort of payback for that. He did say that no one wanted him, no one wants him. And I think he was also referring to his father because I think Hank, not Hank, Bill asked him if his father wanted him but he didn't answer that question. So either he didn't know or he um, didn't want to answer because not even his father wanted him because Again, from a small age, he, he was kind of a, a trouble. And I don't think he wanted, his father wanted that either. The difference between him and Ed and Kemper, I think, is that Ed... I, know, I feel that the reason why he killed them and then did all those horrible things was because in a way he was I don't know shy and unexperienced and maybe he was afraid that um, he's gonna be laughed at even if it's not that if someone you know, agreed to go out with him, I don't think he would have stopped at that and, you know, still going on with his crimes. But I think in his mind, the, the words of his mother you know, stuck with him, that he's not good, that, you know, um, no girl would want to go out with him. And that's why he was killing them. And in a way, you know, apparently from what he said, uh, he tried to kill them um, fast because he wasn't interested, interested in inflicting pain. But more in what, you know, could do after. And uh, on the other hand, Monte seem the opposite. He was trying to dominate, he was trying to feel powerful, he was trying to make them afraid of him, torture them, stabbing, abuse, and then kill. 
and after he killed he was no interested he was not interested anymore and it was more to see to feel himself that he has control Kemper gets more pleasure in feeling that he has um, control of a person's life I, the life of another person is in his hands and he could always take that away while Monty is more having control over a person's body for, for Kemper was the gratifying part came after the person's death while you know Monty the gratifying part was before the 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 killing and I think Kemper is talking about um, his uh, killings in a more personal way it was kind of an experience for him while Monty seems very detached of course both are I don't know they don't see women as as a living thing as a as I don't know equal to men to them they seem like mere objects uh, another difference between them is that Kemper was more organized, planned ahead, uh, maybe chose his victims, disposed of the bodies so well that, you know, they couldn't... Sure, the bodies were found, but uh, he left no traces to... No traces for the police to, to catch him. While Monte, you know, just dumped the bodies here, there, and was caught. Well, you know, Kemper gave himself up because, you know, the anxiety of not knowing if he's gonna be caught or not was just eating him from the inside. Um, also, uh, they have Bill and uh, Holden have another murder case in Pennsylvania somewhere um, a woman was dumped in I don't know, garbage something like that it seemed like uh, she might have been there for four days but at the same time or dead by four days but uh, maybe the body wasn't put there so early maybe she wasn't killed there i don't think they found any traces of of blood so much blood because her body was mutilated and apparently it was all done post-mortem she had like black eyes um I think her jaw was broken. I think she was beaten pretty badly. Um, I thought that, I mean, I still maybe think that is the wife because they, you know, they um, brought the, the man that found the body for the interrogations and it came out that um, she, uh, she, he's married but also has a liking or had a liking into that woman so maybe she rejected him and he didn't um, took it very well uh, but I don't know, maybe his wife also found out that um, he had a liking. Uh, apparently, he was talking about her and she didn't like that very much. And instead of just, you know, 
attack her husband, she attacked the woman. Um, I don't know. It seems a bit weird. Because, like, I don't think they said that they found traces of, like, she was hit with something. So maybe that broke her jaw. I mean, I haven't seen his wife, but I don't know how strong she is to punch her so badly that she, um, she broke her jaw. Maybe a man did it, but the way, like, her breasts were cut, but after she was dead, she was stabbed multiple times after she was dead. If the man had something against her, like, he felt that she was acting too much, like, too mighty, she thought she, uh, she was too good for him, why do it after her death? Not only that, but also the cut from her um, intimate parts. I don't know how to say it not to get demonetized. <laughs> um, it seems so weird. I don't know. Uh, I have no idea what to think. But it's, it's something weird about that. Maybe she was trying to cover something. Make it look like, like someone really tortured her. Like, uh, I don't know. But yeah, that was an interesting episode. This is all I have to say about this one. Thanks for watching. Have a joy. See you next time. Bye.